Hello there, everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Joni, and I am super excited to be here today. Uh, today is actually a collaboration with several other artists, uh, and if you'll check in my description below, the links to their channels would be posted there, and so if you'll check them out, hit that subscribe button, we would all really appreciate it. Uh, today we're taking on bottles, okay? We're all doing a bottle makeover for you. So, let's just get started, okay? What I have here, here is a bottle. So, my husband decided that he was gonna start collecting bourbons, you know, different bourbons. And so, I was super excited because um, the bottles are all so pretty. Uh, but now, you know, so I have a couple of bottles that are empty, but, you know, no one's really drinking this. So now we have several just full bottles of bourbon on this one table I told him that he could use. And it's like, th there's too many. But anyway, so I'm going to make over. Um, I've got a bottle here and I've got another one. So what we're going to do first, I'm just going to, um, we're going to do, I'm actually going to do two bottles. Uh, I'm going to paint them both. And then we're, I'm just gonna use two little different techniques. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I've got a little chip brush, okay? And I'm using DIY paint. I should have uh, showed you that before. But I'm using DIY paint. Let me show you what it looks like. It's an all natural clay-based paint. Uh, and this is the color aviary, okay? I love this color green. It's a green color. It's a farmhouse kind of green. Um, it's just a real nice neutral green, okay? I think green is a neutral color for home decor. So, we're gonna start out and I'm just gonna, actually, let me just paint the bottom first so I can dry that. So, it usually takes like two coats. So, I'll use um, a chip brush because it's really soft on the edges, okay? And I'll just put a really thin coat on first. Again, this is the DIY paint. Um, I love to uh, paint indoors. Um, I live here in Alabama, and so I don't really like to get outside and do any of my creating just because of, um, you know, there's just so many mosquitoes and things flying around, people cutting grass. So it's really nice to be able to use a really uh, good, great, I should say, quality paint uh -oh. um, inside. So it's no smell. If, if I were to give it, like say it smells like something, I would probably just say Play-Doh. Uh, a lot of people say it, it smells like dirt. Um, but anyway, it's all natural, so. I'm gonna dry this coat real quick and then add a second one. But I went ahead and painted the bottom so I could dry that, uh, set it down here, and then finish the top. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my heat gun. You just want to put a light coat on first. So another great thing about DIY paint is it sticks to anything. So see it really it sticks really well to glass. So I love doing bottles or anything glass really for that reason. Now we're going to put a second coat on there. And now on the second coat, if the paint starts to drag a little bit, we're going to spritz it with just a little bit of water. And that just helps to get a smooth finish and get it going. Again, I'm going to paint the bottom. 
first and get it dry. I probably should have an apron on because I'm kind of sloshing it around. Now you can use any kind of glass bottles for this. And also y'all, if you don't, um, if you don't have like a collection of uh, a source, I guess I should say for a collection <laughs> of bottles, if you go to restaurants and something like just go to the bar um, and ask, which I've done that before, if they have some empty, they'll just hand them to you. But of course there's the thrift store. I always love to go to the thrift store um, and find some glass pieces. I usually find some really interesting bottles. There would be a ton of wine bottles, okay? Um, and so that this would be really good for that as well. And um, so all the links to what I'm using will be uh, in the description below. And if you have any questions, be sure just to um, ask down in the comments and I'll, I'll answer anything that I can. If I can't, I'll find the answer. All right, so I'm gonna dry the bottom again. Okay, now what I like to do before I move on, because this paint is kind of thick and it is a chalk uh, type paint. So I'm gonna take, let's see, I've got a little um, 400 grit sandpaper right here. So I like to just kind of knock off some of these little high, high points and just kind of get it smooth. Make sure it's dry though, before you start trying to smooth it out. Now I've got my two bottles here. This is another one. Um, so I've got two bottles laying here and I'm gonna do two little different techniques. Okay, so let's see. Let's start with this one. All right, I'm gonna use an Iron Orchid Designs mold. This is called the, uh, what is this called? Oh, this is called the Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis mold and we're gonna use this big Fleur de Lis right Actually, here. First thing I'm gonna do is just brush a little cornstarch in the mold. This is a pretty uh, big one. And so all this does is just kind of help, help the clay release without sticking and tearing along the edges. All right. Oops, I just need my dough. Not dough, my clay. <laughs> it in. Okay. Just make sure it's pressed down good and then start removing the excess with your thumb. These molds have really nice uh, ridges along the edge that helps you get a, um, a smooth back because we're gonna glue it down while it's still pliable, while it's still, you know, kind of soft and moist. Because especially since this is a curved surface, when you, um, when you just glue it on, you don't want to wait for it to dry before you try to glue it on because it, it'll, you know, it just won't form to your surface. Now, a lot of times I will also take a brayer and just kind of, especially on a big one like this, you can just kind of roll it like this, smooth out the back. And again, just clean up the edges. 
All right, so now let's turn our mold over, bend it, and it should just pop out. All right, there we have it. Okay, it's really nice. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and glue it on our bottle while it's still pliable. Get some glue here. So I'm using tight bond quick and thick glue. You do it like this so you can see. And I'm gonna just pour a little bit out. Okay. Use my finger, get some glue on here. You wanna get it all the way to the edge. a little bit. Now you want to lightly press it, um, you know, against the edges just to make sure it's laying nice and snug against your surface. Do it real gently so you won't uh, mess up any of the detail. tell see how thick this uh, mold is really nice so, so I will usually use my um well usually it's best to just let it let it dry on its own but I'm gonna take my heat gun and see if we can rush it up a bit all right so and the main reason I want this to be really dry is because we're gonna be waxing it and so you want to be it, you want to have it dry so when you're waxing it and you can put a little pressure on there to get the wax down in there around it. Okay, now I'm just going to paint it. I'm going to paint the whole thing green. So again, I'm going to take a little chip brush. So again, you see how this bottle is rounded. If you were to um, pop this out and let this dry, it would dry flat. It wouldn't curve to the bottle. So it's really important to go ahead and glue it on right out of the mold. But I probably would wait, let it dry a little while before messing with it. Still, even though this brush is soft and I've dried it a pretty good bit, I still want to be careful that I'm not, um, and you could actually take a, um, you know, a smaller little brush just to make sure, smooth it out right on the inside there. Now, instead of spritzing that, I'm just gonna spritz my brush a little bit and kind of smooth out that paint. All right, so I'm gonna heat this up again, dry the paint, and hopefully dry the um, dry the uh, clay image a little better as well. All right, so I'm, I've decided I'm gonna put a little bit of trim around the neck as well. You could actually build it up. So let's just see. I'm gonna try to think which one I want to use. I'm actually going to go with this little one. I first thought I wanted to do a, a big one, a thicker one, I mean, but I'm just kind of, I'm liking this one. Let's just see what it looks like. Pop it out. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, 
I think I'm gonna do it just like that, just a little bit. I mean, just a little piece. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little, let's see, a little exacto knife. And let's see where I need to cut it. Now, first thing I like to do though, when I have a trim mold, I'll lay it down and I'll kind of scrunch it together like this. That really helps with any shrinking. So let's just see here. So think about right here. I'm gonna give it just a little extra. This piece in the front, okay, because we want our seam to be in the back. And we're going to do the same thing we did with this. We're just going to paint it green. Okay, so we now have our bottle all green and uh, dry. So now all we have left to do is uh, wax it. Okay, so we've got the two bottles that have been painted. Uh, got two coats of the aviary green. They both have a little uh, mold around the neck. I went ahead and added one on this bottle as well. Again, these are two bourbon bottles. I just, you know, there are so many pretty bottles. Um, different shapes, and I love how these are a little bit bigger than your normal, like, wine bottles. But again, I use trimmings too. It's the trimmings number two is what it's called um, for both of them. Just, just a different one, okay? So there's five different molds on here. So I used uh, this smaller one here and the larger one here. All right, we're gonna go, um, let's just go ahead before I wax them, our final step is waxing. But let me go ahead and show you another little thing I wanna do here. Okay, so for this one, I'm using, uh, I just, I'm gonna monogram it, okay? So I'm just gonna use um, their stamps. All right, again, it's Iron Orchid Designs. And I'm gonna be using the uh, Retro Stamp, which are all these really big letters, like this. So I've got the S, because my last name starts with S, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how to do a little background um, so you can just uh, mask it. So let's just take this one bottle here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pour out some paint. I've got this poured out on a little, just a little plastic thing. All right, so I'm gonna take my brayer and just load it up. Again, this is, this is from Iron Orchid Designs. All right, then I kind of back it. I don't want it just dripping on there, but nicely coated, even, evenly coated, something like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna take, let's move this for just a second, and so I can do this right here. I'm just gonna roll right over the stamp. Okay, making sure it does not, if it went over the edge like that, I'm just gonna kind of clean it off right there. All right, I'll try to get this centered. there. Hope I didn't shift it and then I just tap it. Just tap it down. Get up. Baby wipe. Got some white on there. Okay, lift that 
all. All right, we got a nice little S there. All right, now I need to dry this, okay? Because we're gonna mask it and then put a little background on there. Now, this is the little uh, piece of the alpha bellies I wanna use. So let's see, I kinda wanna go, let's see which one boy I wanna use. Do it that way. All right, so, okay, so this is the mask that we're gonna use in there. Gosh, they're so hard to keep up with because they're just, look, I lay it down and I can't find it. So anyway, we're gonna lay it down right here. So we're masking, in other words, we're, um, we're just gonna cover up the part that we don't want to stamp on. Okay, so here's the little uh, background image again. I'll again lay it down. Load up my brayer. Just making sure it's a nice, even. Let me get it right here. And then I'm just gonna roll it again. Now you can use ink instead of paint. A lot of people like uh, ink better than paint. I just thought for the video, I would just stick with paint. All right, I think it's nice and covered. Lift it up and see what. What angle I want to go in? Let's see. I think I'm going to do this way. Looks a little bit wider on the sides. Now, this is kind of hard. There's hardly any room to grab it. So I'm just going to try to center that as well. Hold it down and tap it on. There's so many things you can monogram uh, with these. It's just so cute, little baby onesies or little tea towels, or I just love this stamp. Again, it's called Alpha Bellies. Make sure I did it good. You don't wanna shift it, so try to keep it as still as you can while you're tapping it on. This has a lot of little squiggly, so I wanna make sure I hit them all. All right. Lift that up and see, look how cute that is. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a little, um, another little artist brush and I'm gonna fill in the S. It's, uh, we're ready to wax it, okay, hopefully. Hopefully that's not so hot, okay? So I'm just gonna take a little uh, chip brush. I think this is one I've already used. And we'll start right here. We're just gonna wax it. This is the DIY Clear Wax, okay, right here. So anytime you're gonna wax, if you're gonna do a colored wax, like I'm gonna be doing white, you wanna clear wax it first because this is a uh, chalk type clay based paint. And so it's very porous and the clay, I mean the wax gets all the way in there. It, I mean, it just really sucks it up. Okay, so let's just, and see how the, the paint color changes? It gets, uh, it goes to the dark color. So DIY paint dries lighter and then once you top coat it with a wax or a polycrylic, the color comes, the bright color comes out. 
All right, so I'm gonna go gently right here because this paint also reactivates with any kind of moisture. So, you know, this needs to be really good and dry before you start to wax it. But for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna try to, um, hopefully I've dried it well enough. All right. So, I mean, you could leave it like this if you wanted. I'm gonna add, um, let's see, where's my white wax? Hold on. Oh, right there. It has clear on the thing. Okay, so I'm gonna take some white wax. Again, I'm just using these chip brushes to wax with. Let's just start up here on the trim. And really just kind of swirl it around. With this swirling motion, it helps get it down into those uh, into the crevices of the mold or of the clay piece, I should say. All right, and now you take a, a soft cloth and you just start wiping it back. Just kind of wipe the top part of the mold or the clay piece. See, like that and see how it stays down in there. Now you have to keep turning your rag. Okay, now we'll just move on to the front. So I love this look. You can also get a similar look with a, a dry brushing white paint. But this way you're, um, getting that look and you're also sealing it at the same time. Now if it doesn't wipe off, you know, like you want it to. So you can wipe off as much as you want or leave as much as you want. But if it doesn't wipe off like, you know, as much as you want, the clear wax acts as an eraser. So you can take your rag, dip, you know, dip your finger in the clear wax and kind of wipe like that. Let's see how it starts wiping back. You can always add more, if, you know. So you can take off, you can add more. You can just keep, you know, keep playing with it to get it like you like it. Um, All right, let me show you one other thing. Um, so I have this, let's see, some gold paint. So if you wanted to bring out the highlights of the mold in another way, so see I've got the white wax down in the creases there. But you could also, one other little thing, so this is a metallic wax and it's uh, a paint couture, metallic wax. And this is French gold, whoops, French gold. And I like to just use my stick, okay? And then I just like to take my stick and then just kind of lightly hit the top of those, of that mold. So you can really dress it up. You can leave it like it is. I like to even go around the rim like this. I like doing this. I do this on a lot of my projects, just kind of hit the high points with a little bit of gold. Gold make, makes everything better, right? But, like I said, you can always leave it, but I think that's really pretty, okay, like it is. All right, that's it, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful, and I hope it was fun. Again, don't forget to check the description below for all the um, links to all the other creators. Uh, there's some 
Good ones, good ones, good ones. So thank you so much. We would all so appreciate if you would subscribe to um, our channels and then you'll never miss uh, a project. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.